All right. So this is what it should look like or something like this, right? You can make it nicer looking towards the end of to, when you're done. Basically, you click here and let's say that I look for pull, right? And then right there, boom, like the same results I was getting from the API, it presents to me the title, like in, in, in a little box, right? The title and the, and the extract, title and extract, title and extract, right? So we've, um, that pretty much for that, like let, let's reload the page. And even if you do find the source code to this one, this one is done with Angular. So it's gonna have a bunch of stuff that's kind of, you know, you're not familiar with. It's gonna take you way more work to, and I'm gonna realize, obviously, if you just copy and paste it, I'm gonna realize you plagiarized it. So that's not in your benefit because I'm just gonna kick your ass and make you do it again. And um, so it starts off like this, right? You just click on the little icon to search and then you issue a query. Or okay, and it gives you what do you start out with? You start out with a little icon, right? As soon as you click on the little icon, have maybe have the icon disappear and have a text box appear, an input, a nicely styled input text box, okay? And then when the user hits enter, or you can have a button if you want, then what happens? There's an invisible UL below the thing, right? Uh, so in the beginning. Right here, what you can do is there's an invisible UL or an invisible div right here underneath the icon. So when I click here, there's an invisible UL or div right there already. And as soon as I I issue, I hit enter, I issue my query or click on a button, whatever you prefer, that UL gets a bunch of LIs appended to it. Or it can be a div too, that gets a bunch of divs appended to it, to it. Okay. Um, and so that's you know the basics of what the layout needs to be. As far as submitting a request to the API, let's go over that again. It's, you know, jQuery.getJSON, right? You're going to put in the URL. We're going to get back to what the URL needs to be in a second. And then comma, right? The second parameter that you're going to include after the URL is a function that handles a response. Um, there, there's just two things. There's no object now, okay? So there's... This, this is not a regular Ajax request where you pass an object with all these properties. This is a JSONP request, which, you know, as we talked about, JSONP is just a, a um, kind of like a security workaround for people injecting code into each other's uh, uh, pages. And it just has a slightly different syntax. And jQuery handles a lot of the, you know, the, the, the unwrapping of the function that you get as a return value for you. So it's kind of transparent. It looks the same. It just the success function looks pretty much the same. It's just a slightly different syntax. Uh, what are you going to do when you get that response object? So if we run this, we're going to see that if we get, when we get the response object, I'm going to change this to HTTPS because I need to submit. If I'm in an HTTPS website, which I am in right now, I need to submit to the HTTPS and be before the log, all of that stuff. I'm just gonna console.log resp response, right? So when I issue this, it's gonna log my response. The response, inside the response object, there's a query object, and inside that query object, there's a pages object, which has all the page IDs and the stuff that I requested, okay? So we're gonna get back into that again in, in another second. But let's talk about how to build this actual URL. So there's two things that you need to know in order to issue this uh, request. How to build this URL and how to handle the response. So how to build the URL. You go to this page, API Sandbox, right? Wikipedia's API Sandbox. You can just Google Wikipedia API. And then on the main page, you control F to find Sandbox. And then you click on the link and you get to the Sandbox. The main things that you need here. Property. Um, should be extracts. So your property, you want it to be equal to extracts right here, right? So that each thing has an extract. You check that, you make sure that uh, it's X intro. What's the purpose of that? So if, if you don't check this off and your query returns multiple <laughs> results, it's only gonna show the full extract, the full page text for the first one. You don't want that. You want a tiny little snippet for all of them. So that's why you check the X intro. Then what do you do next? Um, 
the Oh, that's all the extra stuff right here. Generator. Jeez, it was hiding from. Generator, you want search. So there's all these generators here. I mean, feel free to knock yourself out looking through the documentation of what the hell each one of them is for. That's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing. You want the generator search, right? And the GSR search thing is where you pass what you're searching for. So in here, we can put Chavez, for example, or whatever. And then that will be what we're searching for. So if I make that request, not only is, is Wikipedia going to give me right here, you know, the whole URL that I need to put after n.wikipedia.org is going to give me what the generic format of a response object is going to look like. So it has a continue parameter, which I don't really care about. I don't know what it is. And then the query, which has pages inside of it, right, which has a bunch of IDs and the actual extracts and the data of the page, you see? So the first one says that Chavez, Chavez Ravine, Chav with an accent, A. There we go. Venezuelan president, and then so on and so forth. Okay. So actually, I'm not getting extracts to all of them. GSR search. Yes. It's what you're searching. Yes, exactly. So you're going to get whatever the user grabbed in the input, replace all the spaces with plus signs, right? And put it into GSR search. Okay. And so, yes, it's not quite built for you, right? Because you're going to have to, you know, get this whole thing pretty much generator search and GSR search equals and then just leave it there, right? And then append the here what your user typed instead of a hard coded word. And then what do you need? What's the very last thing that you need? In order to handle that JSONP um, thing that we talked about, you need at the very end. Yes, yeah, so you need at the the hell is oh my cursor is going crazy right now. So basically, since I can't click, I'm gonna go back here and callback equals question mark. So that yes, yeah. So look. That's how query strings work, right? This the your the actual URL ends right here, right? And then you have action equals query and prop equals extract and format equals JSON and X intro. So each parameter of the query string is just and the next parameter and the next one and the next one and the next one. So you need to add one more at the end that says and callback equals question, right? So that is how you form the URL. That's all you need to know to form the URL. And then uh, I'm going to let you figure out why all of the rest ones are not getting extracts. It's hint something that you're going to do up here. Okay. And uh, in the extract section. And um, what else? Okay. So how to handle that response, right? So once we get that response, we get this massive object, right? So I say here, we can say something like bar pages equals resp dot query dot pages, right? And then inside here you could say for var x in pages at x or pages sorry console the log pages at x dot extract and you can also log the title right so beforehand console dot log pages at x dot title right so that way i mean the only thing that you need to change pretty much from what i've given you is instead of console.log in it, putting it inside some HTML element and appending it to another HTML element that exists, right? Which you all know how to do. But that's what we do, you know, when we're coding. We're pretty much re-engineering new stuff based on the solutions to old stuff. So if I paste this right down here, what is it going to do? It's just going to log the title and the extract. Title, extract, title, extract. A bunch of extracts came back on the find, right? Because that query is not correctly formed. Only this extract has something. Julio Gomez on the fine, Julio Galofre on the fine. There you go. Okay. Any questions? I'll put this video up so you can see it again. So you can 